Welcome to the Cannabis Pioneers Show, the common legalization of California for recreational use on top of the already lawful medicinal application is less than two months away. Many deem this as the most important event for the legalization process apart from federally legal legalization. And therefore, investors should be engaged and aware of all of the intricacies of what lies ahead. With us today is Larry Orwitz. He's a securities attorney in Orange County, California for 20 years and presently the managing partner of Orwitz and Armstrong PLC, a firm primarily focused on corporate finance and securities regulation. He represents cannabis operators along the entire supply chain throughout California. He has been extensively involved in assisting operators in securing municipal licenses, assuring their operations comply with existing and proposed regulations, and in identifying lease and acquisition properties to locate cannabis operations. Larry, how are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Golden Bear Insurance Company is the first commercial provider that is able to offer coverage for California's licensed marijuana businesses. Consumers who visit cannabis businesses, workers who work their businesses who sell products or rent property to cannabis businesses, and the investors, owners, and operators of cannabis businesses all should have insurance coverage available to, to help them to recover when something goes wrong just as any other legalized business does. And Larry, this is huge news. What's your take on this? Well, we have been dealing with a number of insurance companies throughout the years in California. And I don't think this is the, this may be the first insurance company that's publicly indicating they'll provide the entire array of insurance across the platforms in cannabis. But there have been other players that have been kind of dabbling in the space for a number of years. Um, there's no doubt that insurance coverage is important. Um, it's, it's also important in the context of California because, as you know, there are a number of unlicensed uh, uh, operators, and the question then becomes, you know, are, are they also eligible for insurance? And certainly we've seen kind of a, a mixed response from the insurance industry. No rules are currently in place for manufacturing, lab testing, or distribution, and no tech structure has been set. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the regulations will be decided gradually. By, by January 2nd, there will be a working supply chain in the cities. Do you see all the regulations coming out gradually? Well, let's be clear. So in California, there are a, a number of layers of regulations. There are certainly regulations at the municipal level, and there are a number of cities in California that are not allowing cannabis. There are other municipalities in California that are allowing different parts of the supply chain and then some that are allowing the entire supply chain. So there are very detailed regulations at the municipal level where cities are uh, prepared to allow cannabis operations. Then in the state of California, there has been a set of regulations that everybody has kind of been working with called the trailer bill. And everybody certainly is beginning to kind of become comfortable with those regulations. And now what we're hearing is within the next week or so, we're going to see kind of a proposed final set of regulations. And it's certainly our view that that's going to be very similar to the to the trailer bill that came out previously. And that covers the entire supply chain. Larry, 3,000 of the 40,000 farmers have signed up for permits. But that says that, you know, primarily um, most of them have not. And they say that this is because local governments haven't issued permits for them or have banned marijuana businesses outright. What's that all about? There's no doubt that the primary challenge to deploying an entirely regulated industry in California is the black market. Um, the black market is enormous here. Um, it permeates every aspect of the supply chain and throughout the geography of California. And over an extended period of time, the regulators have indicated to us that they will begin to examine specific enforcement mechanisms that will begin to clean up the supply chain. But of course, in the meantime, it represents a real challenge to the marketplace itself because those, we, we call them undocumented entrepreneurs or rogue operators, right? So the undocumented entrepreneurs certainly have a, a clear financial advantage. And until that advantage is eliminated by their eliminating their operations, the black market's going to continue. 
Well, sure, because they have, obviously, they don't have to pay taxes, etc. That's what you mean? They don't have to pay taxes. They don't have Permits, to comply with the regulations. Fees, yeah. All of it, and including the seed to sale software and the cash management and also the taxes for sure. So all of it. So the, the cost associated with a regulated, regulated cannabis operator in California is substantial. And until the state of California provides a level playing field for the entire operators by basically squeezing the black market out, um, we're going to struggle here in the, in the state of California. California marijuana consumers are going to have to pay a combination of state and local taxes uh, that vary by municipality. Growers and sellers have their own taxes too. Um, you know, the sales tax can vary from 22% to 24%, and, th and then you got excise tax and additional taxes ranging in a 7 to 9%. This can all be as high as 45%. What's the deal with that? The deal is that the, the arrangement between the industry and the state of California is that the industry would provide a broad, lucrative tax base for the state of California. But of course, the quid pro quo was at some point the state of California and the other regulators would begin to would, would need to begin to form this this level playing field. And so certainly if the taxes are implemented, but the black market continues, it represents an immediate threat to the to the industry here in California. And, and so, you know, they're, they need to start enforcing this, obviously, um, for their own good, so that the tax revenue would would uh, increase substantially. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, and we think what's going to happen is there's going to be one or two very high-profile enforcement actions, um, and then once that happens, hopefully the industry will begin to shake itself out, because probably the most important aspect of this is the industry itself has to be self-policing. And so if, for example, which is required, that there be a regulated supply chain all the way from seed to the eventual retail sale, um, and that you have to be able to validate that that entire supply chain is licensed, um, that until people begin to take that seriously, um, there, we're going to see the industry struggle. The largest legal cannabis producer in the country has created the first ever public service announcement in airport terminals, reminding passengers about the serious legal uh, ramifications of taking their um, uh, their cannabis aboard a plane. Organa Brands, a Denver-based company, premiered an ad uh, this week, well, uh, a few weeks ago now, and it's on branded trays at security checkpoints of a major airport in Southern California. And the ad is a reminder that travelers um, should not uh, take, uh, uh, you know, sh should not cross borders with the cannabis. It says cannabis is legal, traveling with it does not, leave it in California. This is a step in the right direction, right Larry? Absolutely. The United States, because of the conflict between the federal and state regulations, um, is presently not supporting the a nationwide cannabis industry, unlike, for example, the country of Canada, where, where, where I have spent a lot of time um, reviewing and being involved in that industry up there. And certainly that industry is seamless, it's well regulated, it's properly taxed, there's there's a limited black market relative to what we see here in the United States, which is this hodgepodge of state and municipal regulations uh, with no overarching cooperation by the federal government. Is there big money to be made by providing real estate solutions to cultivators? I saw that there's a huge demand. In fact, I was thinking of purchasing and renting uh, storage facilities myself. Is there a huge opportunity in your uh, opinion? So, <clears throat> you know, we run MGIC compliance and one division of MGIC compliance focuses specifically upon the identification of real estate and what are characterized as green zones here. So we've got kind of two or three different moving pieces here. One is, of course, you've got to identify the city that's cannabis friendly. Then you've got to identify an actual green zone. And then you've got to be able to identify properties within that green zone that makes some financial sense. And certainly what used to be a 95 cent, you know, kind of uh, class C warehouse that would, you know, sustain very low level operations has now become a three dollar and 50 cent you know, grow slash distribution slash manufacturing operation um, in, you know, cities like Long Beach and others around uh, Los Angeles, for example. So there, there's huge upside or 
um, you know, th there's a, a, certainly an opportunity with real estate and uh, in the cannabis sector. It's enormous, and we've seen people make millions and millions of dollars because, you know, for the most part, real estate doesn't move. It doesn't double overnight. But when these municipal regulators characterize a particular area as a green zone, and we've seen transactions, for example, where one side of a street is a green zone and the other side isn't, and the valuations can be as much as 100% different. Uh, all Californians can now visit letstalkcannabis.com. It's a website that launched uh, not too long ago by the State Department of Public Health, and it's a first step in public education campaign in order to inform state residents about the you know about cannabis and how it's should be properly dosed and used. It, it, this is part of legalization process, educating the public. What are your thoughts on this? Two and a half years ago, when I met Lori Ajax, who is now heading up the regulatory authority here in California, I think all of us were very concerned, including she was very concerned about what the rollout of this regulatory environment would look like. Um, and I have been nothing other than impressed with, with Ms. Ajax, with her organization, and with the, the support of the state of California that is now providing both consumer and business related information in kind of an astounding um, accelerated fashion. So um, the state of California is trying to demonstrate to the entire world how it should be done. Um, and we have a lot of confidence that we're going to eventually successfully do that. One idea that is getting uh, a lot of acceptance among um, cannabis entrepreneurs and a growing number of cities and states is the formation of public banks to serve the cannabis industry. Cities that are looking to um, creating such financial institutions include Los Angeles, Oakland, Santa Rosa, Philadelphia, Santa Fe, uh, uh, Arizona, Maryland, also highlighting this idea. Uh, have you heard of this and have you heard of other ways of banking? I have had conversations with regulators at almost every level from the federal to the state to the municipal about so-called solutions to the, quote, banking problem here in California and in other states. I have yet to see anything that actually provides a seamless solution so that companies can, without limit and with full disclosure to the banks, um, you know, provide bank deposits and large amounts of cash and otherwise from cannabis operations. So I, I'm certainly aware of those initiatives as well as others. But as we sit here today, I have yet to see an actual solution. Larry, how can people get in touch with you in case they need your, your legal services? Well, it's it's L Horowitz at MJIC.com. So L H O R W I T Z at MJIC.com. They can also look at MJICcompliance.com. Great that you could join us today. This was really educational. Thanks, Larry. Okay, thank you for your time, guys. Recreational uh, cannabis is already for sale in many states, and the additional uh, the addition of a legal retail cannabis market in California, with its massive economy and population, will dramatically change the landscape. Voters in California, Massachusetts, and Maine approved legalization of uh, recreational marijuana in a referendum vote in November of 2016, right after the election. On the same day, the Donald Trump. Uh, was elected president actually. It typically takes at least a year for state officials to set up regulations for this industry and these states are, have already medical marijuana programs and dispensaries but soon they'll also have stores that you can buy and um, uh, stores can sell recreational marijuana uh, to anyone 21 and older. California is aiming to open retail marijuana stores by January 1st. Massachusetts and Maine plan to open them by next summer. Among the checklist of expected regulations is new oversight on water usage such as drip irrigation and reusing wastewater that could prove expensive for cannabis businesses. Other rules will require licensing and background checks for distributors and safety and education training for consumers. This is all great news. Just the licensing requirement though if, as has some of the growers and the seller unsure about how the industry will function and this is why some of them are holding back or not 
uh, permanent. These are hurdles and growth pains that this industry has to navigate through as this legalization from, uh, from the illegal federal side still makes this reality very uh, difficult. This requires not only uh, stockpiling pot, it, uh, but negotiating hurdles uh, on the state and local level. And this is uh, especially true when you talk about zoning, taxation, and other issues. And these are all uh, amazing changes that are going to happen right now with the marijuana industry. Once these changes are implemented and done, the profits are going to be immense. And this is all important news for Wealth Research Group listeners and readers. And you can go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash cannabis pioneers for a detailed outlook on this industry. And we are about to launch a in an important marathon where we talk about specific opportunities in the space make sure that you stick and stay with us through november december january and february as the next four months will be crucial to making immense profits thanks for joining us